Assalamu alaikum and welcome to Bedtime Stories with Ammu Raz. So, how's everyone doing? Today we have another great story for you guys to reflect and to think about how you can live your lives. So this story is called Owners of the Garden. See if you recognize it, because you may do once I tell you. So once, there was this wealthy, pious man. So he was very, very rich. He had a big garden and he had lots of trees with lots of fruits. And after the fruits were picked, this man, he was, very, he was a very good man. He used to distribute these fruits to the poor people who would, who would gather at the garden uh, every season to take their share. So he used to be very generous. He used to give, he used to give fruits to all the poor people. And Allah really liked this. Allah really liked this act of this man. So, by the grace of Allah, the garden used to give a rich harvest every season. Lots and lots of fruit. Why? Because Allah loved this person's act. And he wanted to give him more and more good. So, anyone who spends for the sake of Allah, not only gets rewards in this life, but also in the hereafter. And this man was a good example of that. Then what happened? This man, well, he had lots of sons. Lots of sons, but they weren't as religious, they weren't as pious as him. They didn't fear Allah as much as this man did. So when the father died, they discussed a plan. And they said that the father, he wasn't a very wise man. He, he wasn't very clever. He didn't know how difficult it is to earn a living and to live in this world. Because you, you have to buy things, right? You have to buy houses, you have to buy uh, your transports, your cars. You have to buy all these things. He didn't know that. My, our father was, wasn't very intelligent. He wasn't very intelligent. He didn't know how difficult it was. And they also didn't like the fact that he used to give some of his fruits to the poor people. They didn't like it. See, the sons weren't as religious as, as the father. And they felt that all their efforts would be wasted even if the poor had a little bit of the shit. Because if they're working so hard to get the fruits, because if you think about a farm, and if you think about gardens, it's not easy. You have to plow it, you have to look after it, you have to go around and make sure that it's in good condition, right? So it takes a lot of hard work, and you gotta wait and wait and wait for several months, and then the fruits come out. It's very hard work, actually. So these sons, once they inher inherited the gardens, they felt it'd be a waste of time. If they gave the money, if they gave all the, the, the fruits to the poor. So one of the sons then thought, but what are we going to tell the poor people? Because they're going to come, right? When the next season arrives and the fruit is ready, what are they going to tell the poor people? And they thought about this, hmm. And they thought that maybe if we, uh, because if we say we're not giving you any, then they might say, oh, they're not nice people and they, they still wanted to look like nice people. So they wanted to make sure that they uh, are respected. So they really thought about this. But they weren't really, they weren't afraid of Allah. They weren't afraid of Allah. They were afraid of what people would say. Mm. So one of them suggested, how about we go the night before and we remove all the fruits in the night. And so the garden will be clear before Fajr, before Fajr, Nobody would come and ask for a share because there would be no fruits. So everyone agreed. But they weren't even afraid of Allah. They forgot to say, Insha'Allah. What does Insha'Allah mean? It means if Allah wills. They swore to pluck the fruits of the garden in the morning without saying, Insha'Allah. This is what Allah says in the Quran. If a Muslim does not say, Insha'Allah, before doing something, Allah may not fulfill his wish. But those who have no faith in Allah, they, they don't remember this, right? They don't remember this and they get stuck up. They, they, they think they're so certain. They think they're so clever and they're sure in what they're going to do. But Allah is powerful. He has uh, ultimate wisdom, ultimate might. So what happened? These brothers, they went to sleep. And what, what they were going to do, they were going to wake up in the morning before Fajr and they're going to take all the fruits away so they didn't have to give it to the poor people. And in, in the meantime, with the will of Allah, what happened? There was a fire. Okay? There was a fire. And it burnt it while they were asleep. Right? It burnt the entire garden while they were asleep. In the morning, they got up and they said, as soon as the morning, they said, go and go, go and pl pluck your fruits. Right? As if they were sure they're going to go. So when they went, they were saying in low, you know, they were saying to themselves, no poor man will get any of our fruits today. No poor man will get any fruits. And they were happy. They were so confident. When they were going to the garden, they were unaware that Allah had willed otherwise. 
because the garden had become black by the morning, like a dark night, complete ruins. That's what Allah says. He said it became like a dark night, pitch dark night. So when they reached the garden, they said this was not their garden. And that they went away, they actually went to the wrong garden. But when they saw there was no other way, that this was their garden, they were like, oh. They realized it and they, and they shouted, we have gone astray. Verily, we did wrong. We've gone astray. And we, de we indeed, we are deprived of fruits. The best among them, what did the best person say? Did I not say to you, why not glorify Allah? Right? Why not glorify Allah? Because one of them reminded them and said, why don't you glorify Allah? If you had said, inshallah, had he been advising them earlier, and, but he had been advising them earlier against this act. And he said, it is only Allah who would enhance the fruits if they continue to give away some of them in charity. So all of them felt very, very sad, very upset in what they did. They turned to one another and they said, oh, glory to our Lord, we've been doing a wrong thing. Okay, and we have, um, we have transgressed. What does that mean? That means doing things that we should not have done. And all of them turned to Allah and they said, we hope that Allah will give us a better garden than this. We turn to Allah so that he can forgive us and reward us in the hereafter. Okay, and they were really, really upset for what they did. So it's very, very beloved to Allah that we share whatever we have with those who don't have it. Okay, so Ramadan is coming up. Some of us will feel hungry during the month of Ramadan, but there are many who are hungry every day. So we should use this opportunity. We're going to be in lockdown. We're going to be not able to see, go to the masjid or see our friends and families like we normally do and have iftar together. At least we have our families. But this is a time where there'll be lots of people who are not earning any money because they are locked down in their homes. So we have to give them our wealth as well. We have to share, share our food, uh, share our uh, wealth and share our good deeds, whatever we can do. And we won't lose anything. Right? Anything you give for charity, we will not lose any of it. Uh, we can only gain something. Okay? So, remember to be generous, guys. Remember to give whatever you have, a part of it, for charity. Because Allah will not... That does not take away your wealth. That only improves your wealth. Allah will give you more in this life and the hereafter. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati ya yasifun wa salamun ala mursaleen wa alhamdulillah rabbil alameen wa al-asr illa nasana lafi khus illa ladhina amanu wa amila salihat wa tawasu bil haqqi wa tawasu bil sabu. Assalamu alaikum. Until next week with Bedtime Stories with Amur Raz. Assalamu alaikum.